Hello and welcome to the fourth and final part of my chat with Chris Chapman, the producer and director of Doctor Who Documentaries A Go Go for the DVD and Blu-ray Rangers. This four part interview I've done with Chris has been specifically about his work for Doctor Who The Collection Season 8 and now we've reached what might be my favourite film that Chris has done for this release, Terence and Me, in which Frank Skinner goes on a quest to discover as much about the legendary Doctor who writes a Terence Dix as possible. I absolutely loved this documentary. It's one of the very best Doctor Who films that I've ever seen. And you may already have enjoyed it, but don't worry, there'll be no spoilers in this. We'll reveal a bit, but we certainly won't reveal the final reveal in the documentary, which certainly knocked me for six. So let's get straight in there as I uh, blow Chris's skirts up with some praise. <laughs> Not to denigrate the the other two films, but this I think Terence and Me is is a barnstormer in a in a different way, in its own way, you know. So, how did the Frank Skinner hat just let's, let's just talk about how it came about? Yeah. Um, so I I'd, I'd worked with Terence quite a lot on the on the DVDs, and we'd film with Terence a fair few times. And I remember thinking when we did the first writers' room for season eighteen, I approached Terence because I thought this would be great. You wrote State of Decay. Uh, you're a very different person to Christopher H. Bidmead. I can't wait to put you together and oh. have a little chat about that. And and it was the first time that Terence's agent has ever said no. Because uh, Terence always said to me, if it's Doctor Who, Chris, I'll do it. You know, just let me know and I'll, I'll come to it. I, I don't know why he's become become David Bellamy there. but uh, <laughs> uh, and, and, and it was the first time he said no. And I thought, is that because this is an awkward situation with, you know, that season 18 was a tricky job for Terence or... Or is it something deeper? And actually, I, I suspect it was that his health wasn't great at that point, and he and he was gone within a year or two of, of that oh. point. But like all Doctor Who fans, I've got this inbuilt affection for Terence, you know, in your DNA, uh, and he's certainly in the DNA of Doctor Who, you know, very very at the core of that. Uh, and I thought on this one, you know, we I love working with with with. Uh, with Toby Haydock, you know, and we'll continue to work together. And we could have done this as a Toby film, but I thought, actually, I wonder with Terence being such a big figure, if we might surprise people a bit more by maybe it's an opportunity to bring in somebody who you wouldn't expect would present a, a Doctor Who documentary. But it has to be somebody with a personal take on this. It can't just be a, uh, a famous presenter for hire. It has to be somebody who has a uh, who's invested in this genuinely and is a fan and knows it inside and out who Terence Dix was. And I'd always thought, let's try and get Frank involved in something. We'd seen him at the BFI events. We know he's a he's a big fan of particularly, I think, 60s, 70s who. Uh, and uh, and I approached him with a list of people, you know, if, if Frank says no, you know, I've got a couple of standbys. Um, and, and Frank said yes. And I was just uh, astounded, really, because uh, Frank's obviously a very busy successful chat uh, and what I hadn't realized which I think I don't want to give away but I think is key to the film is that Frank had his own personal connection excuse me to Terence that I couldn't really have have guessed you know there's no way that I could have guessed that the connection that he had and that became the inspiration for the kind of structure of the film uh, so it's a very organic film that's grown genuinely out of Frank's own love for Terence um, and I'm really, and, and, and I think, I mean, and I thought on the shoot, am I going to have to feed Frank info or whatever? And Frank doesn't need info. <laughs> Frank knows that. So I think a lot of people might watch it and be genuinely amazed to think he's one of us, you know, he's, he's a we, you know, and, and, and that would be quite nice. Along the way, Frank meets associates, friends and, and relatives of, of Terence. And it's just, it's such an incredible kind of voyage. Basically, just when you think he's gone as far as he can, in covering Terence and finding out more about him, he goes further. But how much of it was all kind of planned in advance? Uh, I mean, when you're filming over three days, you have to know you know where you're going to and, ha and how you're getting there. Um, I think the key thing on those kind of films is I can know stuff. It's fine for me to know stuff, but it's important what stuff Frank knows. Mm -hmm. And the viewer, the viewer's experience is Frank's experience. So, and Frank, you know, th this is what I would, I would do with Toby as well on, the, on those films that Frank was very keen to say, don't tell me that I don't need to know that. And I was very keen to say something is in here, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I just want to see what you think of it and respond to it. 
So it, it has to be structured. We have to know, and also on a safety level with COVID, we have to be able to plan how can we make each space safe. Um, but it's very unscripted in that sense, you know, and, the, and the, the interviews as they are, are far more like chats, you know, very informal kind of me saying, I'd love us to talk about this chapter heading, this chapter heading, this chapter heading, and then off you go, you know, have, have, have a play with that. And, uh, and I think that that comes across, hopefully, that, it, it, that I think Frank and I both went into it thinking we know Terence because of the Terence that he, that Terence himself projected and the, the version of himself that he put out at conventions. And he loved, I love Terence, but he loved telling the same stories. And you could often, if you were interviewing him, you'd be like, no, I want to avoid that anecdote. Like, no, 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 and he'd bring the anecdote. Like, not that one, not that one, he'd bring it down. And it'd be lovely to hear it, but you'd be hearing it again. And I think we wanted to, to, to really peel back and get a, a, a better sense of the man. And, and the best way we get that is through his, his family, really, you know, through if we hadn't had the involvement of Elsa, his widow, and his, his three sons, Oliver, Jonathan, and Steve, you know, then you kind of, you lose that, really. And the, those are the, 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 I think that's the, the best stuff in the film, really, is, is when the family uh, welcomes Frank so warmly and, and gives that insight that, that really only they can give. And that was my fear in March, that we, would, we wouldn't be able to film with Elsa, you know, or because you think of the of the hit the film would take without that input is just mammoth and the very scary moment at the end when i had to then send the film to the family and say ah, ah. <laughs> hope you like it <laughs> yes. and and of course i'm sure they loved it they loved it mercifully they loved it uh there's because if they if they hated an element of it if they found there was anything in it i mean hopefully i will have explained enough to them what our intentions were and what it was going to be that nothing would be a, a nasty surprise but if they if they were dead against something i'd probably have to lose it you know i'd probably just yeah. on an ethical human level i'd have to listen and say okay you know if, if if you don't want that out there in the world then i you know okay and luckily they loved it so it was good so i had obviously you know frank's reaction to how far down the rabbit hole he manages to go you know he's obvious on screen how do, how do you feel about the the i mean the extent of the access you got there yeah i i i think there's some i'm really happy you know and i, and I think that, that, that there's a scene at the end of the film where it all kind of comes together and you think actually this is you know that importance that terence has to all of us that familiar familiarity that we all feel we have with him i think it just enlarges that connection that I think viewers will feel to him. I think they'll suddenly feel there's another layer to their understanding of the man. And that's, that's what I want to achieve. You know, that's why, that's why we did it. Lovely. And on another level, of course, there's, um, there's target books, lots of lovely target books in this <laughs> film. You've got Paul Cornell, Robert um, Shearman and Jenny Colgan sitting around a table with Frank and each reading an, their favorite excerpt from a target book. That's fantastic stuff, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I think the whole thing, we wanted it to be a hymn to, to, to the bookworm, essentially, you know, a hymn to the writer, a hymn to the bookworm, a hymn to the, to the kind of Matilda child sitting in the library, gorging on books. And so with Terence, you perfectly have that because you, you're not just talking about a television writer, you know, you want to encompass all the different sides of him. So, you, so yeah, definitely it was, it was really important to get that element into it. This, this has been absolutely fantastic, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing so much. I'm pleased that we have essentially done a making of a making of video. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's marvellous. And just, um, you know, just as a casual last question, I'm sure this will be fine. Can you tell us what the next six or seven <laughs> box sets are going to be after after this one? And 20 I don't know. I don't know. I never I never know that we, we always shuffle them around. And so, so I've, I've no idea. No idea. But I'm sure they'll be lovely. I'm sure they'll be marvellous. That's a very polite way of saying sod off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all going to, you know, the, 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 the plan is for it to all happen. So, you know, it, it'll happen, I hope. Can you tell us whether you're actually working on new, you know, value added material now or soon? I am. Hooray. That's, that's all we need to know. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> that's all we need to know to ignite joy in our hearts, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoy the set, everybody. Thank you. Nice. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I also hope you'll enjoy the next one. Until then, don't forget to embrace your obsession.